Hey everybody, welcome to Global Comic Safari. This week we are hitting the first appearance of Miles Morales in Ultimate Fallout 4 and showing you the international editions that match it. <laughs> Hey, man, what's up? Been a while. First show of 2021. Yeah, I thought we'd bring uh, a pretty pretty badass episode with the Miles Morales first appearance. I think that's going to be fun. Uh, we sometimes get a little bit into Bronze and Silver Age, but hey, we decided we'd do another modern show for you. Um, and this is a fun book, fun stuff out there in crazy countries we found. Uh, before yeah. we do it, I just want to thank uh, our, our buddies at Comic Barricade. Check them out. If you're into um, collecting forms, it's almost necessary with the different sizes and different shapes of all these different books and all the craziness. And if you do slabs, anything like that, they fit them all. Um, check them out at comicbarricade.com. Um, use the uh, promo code FLIPSIDE for 10% off your order. Also, thanks to our friends at CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, um, for the best free content anywhere daily articles including the uh cbsi hot 10 list every friday um yep. i know we talk about it every week but uh, a lot of people come and help us on this research for this show this is a really tough one with the modern book and you know we're not even 100 percent sure this is all of them but this is all anybody we know has been able to track down since they've been looking so who helped us this week okay so this week or, you know, a really tight crew of guys that we talk to probably daily, right, John? Robert Absolutely. Fordham, Josh Allen, and Steve Bridewell helped us on the research on this show. Couldn't make this show without the community. There's just too much information out there to to keep in our own hands. So we, we have to rely on the community. And uh, those guys, you know, they're great collectors. And thank you for helping us, man. Yeah, they've been scouring the Internet for these for a while. So they're Great dudes and a lot of research because we'd never get there ourselves. Trust me. Yeah. Um, so book in question, Ultimate Fallout 4, uh, printed Marvel Comics, October 2011. This was the end of the um, Peter Parker and Ultimate Universe. And they introduced uh, Miles in this comic who has since went on to his own run and to cross over into the main 616 and become a mega star all his own. Um, mega, mega star. Uh, this book is funny. I thought it was printed to the bejesus. I, it's still a high print book, but nothing like we're used to from the 90s. It, uh, it's a significant out there, but not as much as his fans need. Um, mm -hmm. This book will cost you, you know, many hundreds of dollars for almost any kind of condition at this point. A 9.8 is going to run you. About a grand, maybe a little more right now. It's it's been up between eight hundred and twelve hundred the last couple months. Um, there's also uh, several variations variants. There's the um, one in twenty five Diverject variant. That one in nine eight will cost you well over ten grand at this point. Whoa, really? Yeah. Damn. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, there is a second print which is also the, the Mark Badgley cover. We didn't talk about that, but we'll hit that a little more in a minute. Um, this one, he you should see his face instead of the mask. And there's also the second printing variant, um, which is uh, Pacelli with him, uh, just his face coming out of the mask, which is a beautiful, beautiful book that not as many people talk about as you would think. I, li I like that one, John. I, 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 I like the expression on his face. Yeah, and I don't think we've found any of that particular cover yet. They all seem to, at least in the sets we've found so far, be the traditional Badgley cover and the um, Divergent. one to five Diverject covers used yeah. on a few. Um, yeah, for the most part, that's all. Um, though there is one that's very interesting, and we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, but needless to say, this is a huge, huge book. Um, very important at this point. You know, looking back, it's only 10 years old, but, I mean, the influence that it's had has been huge. Um, introducing a um, uh, just a multicultured Spider-Man was was huge. It took a little while to kind of catch up, but now you know in the last twelve months things have just exploded, and it's become you know one of the most relevant books out there. 
Oh yeah. Well, the movie was a, had a big part to do with that too, probably. Oh, the um, Spider Verse. Yes, the Spider Verse. Yeah, I mean it. It was a wonderful movie. Just reinforced reinforcing the character of Miles Morales, and I mean, what can you say? This is a badass modern book, man. I, and I don't, I don't think it's going to be that long till we see him on uh, the the big screen. I think you're right. I think eventually we're gonna we're gonna see a torch get passed, and when that happens. This book only is, you know, it's gonna it's gonna go insane. And so, if you're building the set, you need to start now. Yeah, and that is an interesting point because this this book here, you know, to, to buy a raw copy is gonna be three four hundred bucks. Um, you can find some of these other editions, international editions, uh, for significantly less. They're starting to pick up some steam, but they're nowhere yeah. near that right now. So, yeah, uh, let's show you what we're looking at. This is the set pit. Small pretty. set, um, small, small but pretty. Four editions using the traditional Bagley cover, uh, and then three using the Divergent cover. Um, quite a few countries shown. Many of these in the inter international market are not traditional floppies. Um, we see a lot more in kind of uh, either you want to call it trade paperback or prestige kind of format, where they'll put mm -hmm. a couple issues together. Yeah. I think at least one of these is a hard copy or a hardcover um, thick book. So um, you got to be a little more out of the box in the foreign market because they just don't produce the floppies on everything like like we're used to. Uh, yeah, you've seen some of the Panini stuff. Usually there there are a couple stories in each printing of a book they do. Yeah, totally, totally. All right, so jump into the first one, Ultimate Fallout One. <laughs> I'll let you pronounce it because I just realized I can't. Do it. <laughs> I, I don't speak German. I'm Welt on Spider Man, <laughs> the German Ultimate Fallout One, published by Panini in Germany in February of 2012. This one is a soft cover with 128 pages, full color, and it contains the Ultimate Fallout story one through six. So this book is thick, John. Probably yeah. one of the thickest of the set. Um, and it, you know, it, they didn't really, all, they didn't go very far away from the American original. Uh, there's not a lot of cluttering elements like barcodes or anything. You've got the little panini down there on the bottom, but this one's pretty straightforward, I think. No, and you think it's got the ultimate fallout one through six. Yeah. Um, ultimate fallout four was in October. So really ultimate fallout six was probably pushed in November or in, in December for this to be February 12. It, it came out pretty darn close to the original. I think that's yeah. the closest one there is. I think that might be the closest one. Yeah. Which, you know, it, you know, that's always interesting. The, the foreign publisher schedules and how they decide to, to publish. Um, and, and, you know, but we like to say that collectors like the foreign editions that are closest to the American original published date. But I think with the with with the moderns, it it doesn't bother me as much if it's printed a little bit later than, especially if it's a cool cover. So I don't yeah, know exactly. Um, pretty neat. I mean, in comparison to the American, it's pretty straightforward. I think the Amer uh, go to the American original real quick. Does that actually have? Yeah, see how the American original's got the damn barcode on there, kind of. Yeah, a little more clutter even. A little more cluttery. I think the Germans did well but just doing a little tiny panini on the bottom there. I, I did fail them to mention that the Ultimate Fallout 4 did have a, a newsstand edition as well. Had the same barcode, but you'll see a newsstand written on it. So Ah, uh, interesting. Remembered that. Um, kind of jump into the next one in the set is our friends in Spain. This one of the bunch. Remember I said there was going to be one that was that was a little different. Um, okay, so the Spanish. Ultimate Comics. Consecuencias, number two, published by Panini in April of 2012. This book's got a kind of a weird format issue. It's, it's like really tall, but a little bit thinner width. So it's 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 kind of a, a weird whiff. As far as I know, I couldn't find the info for the inside on this one, but I'm pretty sure this is just the Fallout 4, I believe. Um, and maybe, 
I don't know, or maybe it's got a couple issues in there. I, I couldn't find it. Potentially, likely four through six, just because it's four through six consequences yeah. two. You assume that consequences one was one through three. Um, interesting thing about it is you said it's taller. Yeah, it's if you look taller. at it, they included his his face kind of blurred out, where the other ones, you know, it kind of ends about halfway through his face. It's like they added that extra extra I, part of the image. Yeah, this is this is really the this is the main one that's different enough that it draws my eye. I mean, and if you look at the set pick, you see it plain as day. I I like this one. I like that they added that and didn't cover up. See see how the you know on the set pick, of course, we formatted it so they all fit nicely. But this one's taller. You know, it's almost magazine height. So I I dig this one. Yeah, I dig a little different one. different vibe. Yeah. I mean, it is a little weird that they didn't use red in the title. The red does call out. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I'm okay with it. I, I dig this one. Yeah, it's still very clean. Small barcode. Yeah. yeah, this one's a cool one. All right. Next one. And, I, and, and before we leave for this one, though, I wanted to say that um, with the Spanish stuff, you don't always just go to Spanish eBay. There are other websites that you can find. Spanish material on particularly there's one called Todo Colección. You you got to look on Todo for a lot of the Spanish editions. Spanish eBay isn't the only place to find them, so that's definitely true for this book if you're going to be hunting it. Okay. Uh, next one, one of my favorite countries to to live in. Apparently, I, yeah. <laughs> well, I seem to be spending a fortune there. I've not bought this book yet, but I'm surprised actually. <laughs> Brazilian Ultimate Marvel is what they titled this one. Number 27, published by Panini in September of 2012. This one contains Ultimate Fallout 4 through 6. Um, so the the only weird thing about this book is apparently the interiors are newsprint, <laughs> which is very odd on a modern book. Yeah, especially in, in you know this kind of prestige or, or uh, trade cover um, format. Yeah. The, it's it's weird. A um, couple of the guys have this book, and they've been able to go through it and look inside, and it's just like the texture's off. You're, we're not used to newsprint on modern books, so I, I don't know. There's just it's it's a textural thing. I think it's different for sure. I mean, yeah. maybe they had to save some. Maybe the publisher had to save money. Maybe the print run was was pretty high, and then at the last minute they decided to use a cheaper paper. I don't know. And you know, the other weird thing about it is, you know, it's Panini. Panini, you'll notice we say Panini all the time. It's because Panini almost has like this uh, global stronghold. Yeah. Str I mean, it's like a global. Uh, what do they call that when one company controls everything? Um, Monopoly. Monopoly. It's almost like they've got a global monopoly on a lot of the modern foreign material. Um, so why did they choose to go so cheap with the Brazil? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, most of the Panini stuff Weird. in Europe is, is gorgeous and really it's, high end. Yeah. What? Why did Brazil get kind of second thrift on that? I don't know. Weird. Yeah. I mean, and this is almost the classic cover barcode movement, and it just says Marvel instead of Fallout. Pretty much. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of difference. Um, just weird. Just one of those odd things that makes you go, hmm. So the next one is the newest one in the set. This is brand spanking new. Um, pretty sure it's December of 2020. It might have maybe been the end of November, but it's only been on the market a very short time. Um, only pick I could get of the book was an eBay seller who apparently got his early. This is the Mexican edition from La Mole. It's Ultimate Fallout 4. It's a foil cover. They've done uh -huh. some of these other editions that way because it you know, gives them a little pizzazz. Um, mm -hmm. What's fun about it is it's a floppy. As far as nobody's looked at the inside yet, but it's advertised as the Ultimate Fallout 4 issue, and they traditionally follow that. Um, crazy difficult to acquire in America right now because it was limited to a thousand. Um, That's tiny. That's tiny. tiny. Um, 160 pesos, which is about nine, 10 bucks to get it. But the hook is they don't do any international shipping. So you and I can't buy it from here. 
and they're limiting to one per person. So even if you've got a contact in Mexico, you can get one. So really it's going to cost you 40, 50 bucks to get it here. Once they ship to them, they ship to you and you put some fees in for them doing all the legwork. So yeah. while it's only a $10 book, the built-in price is pretty expensive. Um, really expensive. And I, you know what I see happening with this book? There's going to be, there's going to be sources in Mexico. They're going to say, what? Source it for you, my one copy? Hell no, I'm buying it for myself to flip on eBay. That's what's going to happen with this book. Yeah. This is going to be a tough book. Yeah, and if you have any ex experience with the foils, they, you know, you can't rescue them. Once there's a nick, a tick, it's done. And, you know, all it takes is a slight mishandling and it's got it. Um, so, yeah, there's not even a clearer picture. This is the only one on there. Even the yeah. uh, La Mole website, which is where they were ordered from, really kind of showed some weird angles of this book just to show you that it was a foil cover. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see where this one goes in the very near future because it's the closest to Americans and that it is a floppy. It's a, a foil, so we're used to it. And it's a La Mole variant, which, you know, we're used to as a country seeing those pop up. So yeah. some of them fizzle and do nothing. Other ones will be hundred dollar books in no time. Shit, dude. I see this. I see nine eights of this book commanding big, big bucks. It's very near in the future. Yes. I, this is one I would be kind of watching for, see what pops up and what happens. Yeah. If you're in Mexico and you haven't ordered one of these, you're a fool. If you don't order one now, I mean, yeah, they, were, you don't they were still up pretty recently i don't know if they're up today but they were pretty recently so yeah that's that's going to be a killer book man if you're building this set i'm going to venture to say that this is going to be the one that's going to give you some trouble well, it's one of the two that i think one, be yeah one of the two yeah all right so all the, this is the last one using the badgley cover all the rest of them are the uh divergent version and so we're going to kick over to france to france Ultimate Spider-Man or Seri. I don't know how to, basically hardcover. Um, this one's got a hardcover, so it's more of like, you know, like you said, the prestige or TPB format. It's number four, published by Panini in France in March 2012. The interiors are full color and it contains issues one through four of the Ultimate Fallout series. And it has the Divergic yeah. cover. Kind of neat. The interesting with the white um, banner versus the black gives it a little bit of a unique vibe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do we do we have a, a, a shot of the American real quick so we can take a look at it? Um, we got it in the set pick here. In the set pick. Yeah, yeah. By using by using the white, they kind of they really lightened it up. A bit. Yeah. I almost think I, the rest of the image is a little bit lightened as well. Yeah, it's a little washed out. Um, yeah, kind of. Kind of weird. I, I I like the hardcover part, but like we've said before, if that hardcover gets some damage, sometimes the hardcovers can give you trouble if you're trying to press them. Um, well, I don't even know if you can press a hardcover. If, yeah. Well, I, I think depending on the type, I thought you could help it a little bit. Yeah. But, I mean, but, I, again, I don't think you can grade these and all that kind of stuff, so it becomes its own. Yeah, bane true. of your collection. I, I I will collect hardcovers of some books that I like, like uh, the Crow series and stuff like that. But uh, it's going to be an interesting thing to see if Americans would want to purchase something that's not a floppy. Yeah, and embrace that's so, it. That's so different. I I did I really dig the the divergent art. I I mean I like the movement. I mean it's it's a cool variant cover for sure. Yeah, um, it's got a pretty traditional Spider-Man kind of in-action pose. Yeah, yeah, but I can't see why a majority of the of the publishers of the countries did use the classic Bagley cover. Yeah. All right, next one in our little lineup here, Italy. Italy, the Italians. Okay, Italian Ultimate Comics number eleven, published by Panini in March of two thousand twelve. Full color contains Ultimate Fallout four through six. This one is probably one of the nicest of the bunch. It's got really high end paper quality, and the packaging of it is just very slick throughout. Very common of uh, Italian comic publishing excellence. Italians just do comics in a wonderful way. If I had a problem with this book, it might be that I think that the they used a little bit too much trade dress on the bottom there, 
I would kind of prefer the barcode not be there or be on the back or something. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, the guys were saying the interior of this book is just gorgeous. Yeah, beautiful book. Uh, very, yeah. very close to the original. Very, very clean. Uh, very, you know, very untouched per se. Uh, yeah. And no, Italian, Italian, books, Italian books are just gorgeous. I mean, they just, they just use the high quality everything. Yeah, high, highest quality everything. It it's really comes down to Italian Italian comic publishing excellence. They're just, I don't know what it is. Um, the, the Italian books just take it, they go that one extra step. And it, it doesn't even matter who the publisher is, whether it's old, you know, Corno from back in the Bronze Age to some of the newer, you know, Panini in Italy. Um, you know, the, the difference between, you know, Panini in Italy and Panini in Brazil you know, quite large. Um, the Italian, the Italian books, awesome. Well, Gotta have also, it. also March of 2012, which means it's older. Uh, Italians, you know, they like to print very nice books, but they may not have saved this. this like it's, you know, again, in this kind of format, it's a reading type material. Yeah, might um, be hard to find in a good grade. Exactly. Um, a lot of shelf wear because they're they're you know potentially stored that way. Um, so. I won't say a tough book, but I bet hard to find a real crispy one. And a nice one. Yeah, I would, I would assume that's true. Yeah. All right. The last one on the list is uh, might be the hardest to kind of track down. And because it's a market that we don't even really have much connection to. We know a couple guys yeah. have, have scored a few, but man, Russia. Russia. <laughs> Free comic book day published by... Who the fuck can read Russian? I can't. We, yeah. we, we don't know who the publisher is. Um, what we do know, though, is that this book only contains partial story from Ultimate Four. So it is more like those preview books that you get on Free Comic Book Day. It's, it's, you know, it's a floppy. But of all the Divergex, this is my favorite simply because the Russian titling is freaking awesome. Oh yeah, and then you know, not a lot of not a lot of uh, extra stuff. You do got the free comic book day banner and the small Marvel logo, but it's a very clean book, no wasted clean. barcode, any of that stuff, and it's a floppy. And it's a true floppy. This this one is, and as we know, we've got a lot of friends that gets you know have been hunting Russia and getting a lot of books from Russia. They don't you know, they're pretty bad on the shipping front. You know, you I've had books come in from Russia in manila envelopes only before. I'm sh I'm guessing if you were to, you know, purchase this book from a Russian, maybe if you got lucky and it was on eBay, maybe they would package it right. But if you ordered it, somehow found it at uh there's a couple Russian comic book sites. I'm going to guess it's probably just going to get shipped in a a very flimsy it just it, it finding this book in grade is going to be hard. I'm thinking. The other thing to be cautious about with Russia is there's a lot of kind of bootleg and mm -hmm. you don't know how to tell if it's a, you know, it's a, if it's one printing or if they just keep reprinting it, who knows with Russia. Yeah. And we've seen that with some of these more recent uh, Russian books that are getting printed. Uh, the 181, I think has multiple printings. Um, what was, there was another one I thought that had multiple printings, John. Yeah. Was it the, the uh, I can't remember, but. I know the guys have been saying, yeah, there, there are multiple printings. And, and the only way to tell is probably you've got to be able to read Russian and read the Russian indicia. And how do people <laughs> read Russian? Good, good luck. So well, we're not yeah. saying that we know there's reprints yet, but you don't know with them. If something becomes popular enough, they'll, they'll figure out a way to make more. Yeah, and a lot of the comic, you know, I think the way some of the bigger comic shops have – you know, they print their own kind of stuff with their own printers as well. So it's just, it's, it's hard to say that it was a specific publisher and not just, you know, a group of comic shops printing this, uh, you know, getting the license from Marvel and printing it and then deciding later going, hey, let's, that went well, let's, let's, print up, let's print some more, which is how is what I think is happening with, you know, the Hulk 181. And I think it was, a, the, there was a Ghost Rider one. Yeah, there were um, some others. I don't remember. There were some others. But I think that's kind of what's happened is they, they sell out of their stock, and then they just go and print some more. So unless you can really, you know, be careful on this one. 
you, I would suggest you ask, if you see one for sale somewhere, ask the right questions. If you're buying from a local Russian, ask them if it, you know, if it's a second or third printing, fourth printing, it's the original that came out on free comic book day. Uh, but if you're building this set, this one's going to probably give you some fits. Yeah. You got to try uh, If you can navigate Russia, you've been doing it a minute. Cause it's, it's not the easiest yeah. one. Guys can do it. You know, guys have been doing it, but it ain't easy. This is not entry level foreign collecting here. No, no. And put together this set would be a, a bugger. I don't think any of the guys we know had the whole set. As far as I know, we kind of had to no. come write these picks. Actually, nobody has the foil yet because they haven't shipped. Yeah, so. no one has the foil yet. Um, what might look like a fairly simple set for an only 10-year-old book becomes a little complicated when you add in some of these weird places that have produced it. Um, as we said, this is as of what we know today. Doesn't mean tomorrow we don't find there another edition pops up somewhere that yeah. either is a newer printing or just some country that people aren't aware how to production run of the book yeah i mean who knows there could be a, there could be one in thailand there could be one there could be an indonesian one there could be you know oftentimes sometimes the some of the australian stuff surprises me yeah so um, there could be some weird yeah, stuff could, out there we haven't seen yet yeah and then and then the, very interestingly enough is we haven't seen there's got to be a japanese right you i don't think. remember seeing i mean with a you would think there'd be a Japanese. That that's the one that kind of surprised me the most. That didn't exist. I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. And there's probably I'm gonna guess there's a good chance there might be one in Chinese. You know, for the, the Taiwan market is small, but the, the stuff does get produced. And well, they're, they're they're well they're may, not, may not use the cover. It may be in a in a in a big edition that didn't choose this cover, didn't choose it, and the story yeah. buried in something we. Had we no can't find. Of fighting right now. Yeah, uh, Korea has surprised me lately with having a lot of more modern stuff. So, yeah. So, whatever happens, don't take our word that this is all of them. This is one of those sets that um, I bet you, if you did a little hard digging, you'd find there's probably one or two more out there that we just don't know. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We had a great time. Uh, fun digging into a set that we didn't know a lot about initially. Yeah. And yeah. uh, let us know in the comments if you find something, you know of something else that we missed, you know of a book that, that we didn't know about, or if you got another book you want us to, to do a little digging on and try and get a set uh, show together, we'd appreciate you letting us know. And uh, thanks. Check out the rest of the channel. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again.